You know, it's not very often that I make a video dedicated solely to helping you all break the game, but this one here, this video is gonna help you break the freaking game, everyone. But in case you didn't know, the waters of life flow through Don't Starve Hamlet, and they can even give more life to some special magic flowers to boots. The thing is, however, we can make it all not so special at the end of the day by infinitely farming the magic water itself with but two simple tricks. Let's discuss. Well, after we actually find the Fountain of Youth, of course, as this is still a guide, mind you. Now, the fountain is found on its very own island, but thankfully, said island only has one path to get there, so finding it is not going to be too difficult. You'll just have to make sure that you can locate and then venture through this very ancient pig ruins. Mind the tops of ruins, everyone. They tell you where they lead. And ones with these on top of them lead to the Fountain Island, guaranteed. So then, we found it. What now? Well, if we're not actually looking to dance with what comes after the process of taking from the Fountain of Youth, then all we need to do is bloody run away. No? Not joking. If all we want is the magic water, then screw the Puglis at the end of the day. That said, if we want more magic water, then we might have an issue. Not with the Puglis, mind you. He can stay alive throughout this whole thing. No, no, no. With the fountain itself. For you see, the fountain will regenerate more water after a day has passed, but only if there was no other water or flowers in the world. So then, we need to trick it, yes? Yes, and there are two ways to do so, folks. Bundling wrap and world hopping. The former is hilariously simple, as all you need to do is toss a magic water into a bundle, wait eight minutes of real time or one day in game, and boom, more water will be yours to take. Be mindful though, if you did kill the bug list, it will return after this eight minute timer as well. So watch yourself out there. And yes, it is that simple. Now all you need to do is bundle that second water of yours, repeat what we just did as many times as you please, and you've got yourself infinite magic waters. Good stuff. Ah, but I'm sure some of you are asking about how to actually get bundling wrap in a game without a big bad bee queen. So allow me to enlighten you. If we're talking solely Don't Starve Hamlet, then our one and only option for obtaining the blueprint is killing another big bad queen, the Queen Womats. It's an easy fight that is easily cheesed by standing directly behind her. But let's say you either started in Reign of Giants or Shipwrecked instead. Where do we now get Bundling Rat Blueprint in these games? Well, from bees, believe it or not. For you see, solo Don't Star Bees are not only literal snipers, they offer a 4% chance at dropping the blueprints. So there you go, easy peasy. That reminds me though, what's option number two for essentially duplicating Magic Waterbeard? Well, world hopping, just like I said earlier. You'll be needing to have obtained a can of Silly String from the Royal Gallery here, following a trade with Queen Malfalfa, as only then can you turn around and turn this can of Silly String into what is known as the Skyworthy. And a Skyworthy is Hamlet's version of a Seaworthy, and it will let you hop from Hamlet to Shipwreck to Reign of Giants and vice versa and everything in bloody between. So hop worlds, wait a day, return, and the fountain should be full again. Good stuff. But yeah, why do we care? Why work towards multiple magic waters, Beard? Good question, but here's my own question to you. Can you not read these flippin' stat returns right now? If you can, know that your eyes do not deceive you, and that magic water will indeed return 450 hunger, 150 sanity, and 300 health each and every slurp. Plus, this stuff can even cure poison as well, so make note. However, that is an expensive cure, if you know what I mean. There is a problem, however. We can only take one sip at a time. Hence why I'm telling you how to get more of the bloody stuff. But sorry, Wigford players, as you guys are going to be left out once more. As even magic water is off limits to ya. Not good. That said, thankfully all survivors can benefit from what's to come. 
And what's to come is the magic flower, everybody. Magic flowers are planted anywhere we choose via planting the magic water itself anywhere we choose. And the flowers will raise our sanity by 0.6 per second at the cost of 0.5 hunger per second. They'll be able to be transplanted at will by us, as shoveling magic flowers will not actually destroy them. Magic flowers will throw off infinite light, which is obviously huge when combined with what I just bloody mentioned. And oh yeah, magic flowers will also act as a living, breathing meat effigy at the end of the day. Yes folks, plant a magic flower and it will save you upon death. Plant the multiple you farmed earlier, perhaps, and heck, it will be like you're immortal. And I mean, we did get the bloody stuff from the Fountain of Youth, so that makes sense. But ah, uh, yes, if you're wondering if the effects of the flower stack when multiple are nearby, they do. Both the hunger and sanity gain, though, mind you. So be careful not to starve yourself. It happens fast. But our last note of the day is an awesome one, but a pretty quick one, as I think we'll be getting to what actually allows us to make the living artifact here very, very soon. But the living artifact is the only magic watercraft in the game, and it is a literal suit of ancient armor that will protect us against all incoming damage. Deals 68 melee damage itself with 100 charge damage, mind you keeps us free from poison of any kind, frees us from the effects of fog, prevents any freezing and overheating due to seasons, grants night vision, and still lets us chop, mine, hammer, and even dig at the end of the day. Now you've only got three minutes to enjoy all of that, so make the most of it. But folks, I lied to ya. Here's the actual final note of the day. Do not, I repeat, do not just leave your magic water lying around. Mobs will eat it, and you might just be left with crap all at the end of the day. Literally. But there you have it, everyone. A guide on magic water, magic flowers, and how to use our very own magic of fool in the game to make even more magic. Defy the laws of nature, folks. Thanks for watching. Well wished to all, slurp it up, and I'll see ya in the next one. Bye bye.